So I'm really gonna quickly run through connecting uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012 with vSphere and ESX. Now the only work I've done up front is to actually, I've got a run as account <coughs> for the administrator and run as account for the ESX uh, root account. So the first thing we actually have to do is actually in the fabric, we have to go in and add the vCenter server itself. So before we can add an ESX host, we have to add the VMware vCenter server because that's how we actually communicate to ESX host. We go via the vCenter that has those public APIs and then vCenter performs the actions we tell it on those ESX hosts. So the first thing I do is I add my vCenter host. I specify the run as account. So I've pre pre-created this. Um, I don't need the secure mode where I am. Don't need the certificate requirements. It's just sort of an internal lab. I'm gonna go ahead. Yes, import that certificate. And then it's gonna start a job uh, to actually go and do that. And you can see here, it's responding. So once I have that connection to vCenter, now I can actually go in and add a VMware ESX host. So this time I run as account is actually gonna be the ESX root account. So I just created that with username root and the password for the account. Notice here, because it connected to vCenter, it knows about the ESX hosts that are actually available. So we're going to select it. I could go and actually add pass of VM, so I'm going to skip that for this point just to quickly connect and finish. So this will actually go and refresh, and what I'll actually see once the job is completed. I'll actually be able to go in and see all those virtual machines actually running on that ESX host. So if I go and look at my jobs, so it's now completed. I can now I can actually see my virtual machine. And if I go to the fabric again, I can see the host, it's CPU average, available memory, and details about it. And if I bounce back to my VM and services view, if I click overview, again, I'll actually start now getting information about that ESX host. And this is all coming via vCenter. But I can now go in, I can manage the VMs on that host, create new ones. We can also actually import those templates. So from the virtual center, if I do import templates, it actually shows me the templates available on that vCenter server. And actually the change in VMM 2012 is, it won't actually remove them from vCenter. It said it will now be available in the library but when we actually deploy it to an ESX host, it'll actually deploy it via vCenter instead of taking it from VMM and then pushing it out um, to ESX, etc. So it's actually a lot more efficient and it means you can still manage from VMM and to vCenter. If I now actually go and look in my library, my VM templates, you'll see I've got that new template there. If I look at the properties of it, because it's a VMDK file, we can see it's actually based on the SCSI adapter, which is the way um, ESX, you have to have the boot device on the SCSI adapter, so it's slightly different from on Hyper-V, but we can now actually deploy that template out uh, through BMM.